Hey everybody, welcome to the next and possibly last video in the series. Uh, this will pretty much cover the uh, uh, alternative plugins that I found that you might be interested in using and also a new toy that I have added to the arsenal of my podcast. And that is why this may not be the last video because you know what? There's always new things coming out. There's always a chance that I might find something I like better than something else, something that's more functional, something that's more geared towards podcasting. Uh, so I may do videos in the future introducing new plugins or new methods if I find something that works works better than what I've shown you previously. The world is evolving, life is evolving, and so does our business and podcasts and everything else. But we are going today to go over some alternatives. Now, as you guys know uh, from pre previous videos for uh, volume leveling, which is the first thing that we're going to talk about, I use the Waves Vocal Rider for the first part of my effects chain. And we're going to take a look at that right now. There it is, blah, blah, blah. And uh, this is how I set it up. I've uh, set a preset up for that. I think that one actually came with it and I really liked it and I modified it just a little bit. But this is the one I use. So let's hear how things sound without it. Yeah, it has, uh, has this really impacted the, the virus and everything? Has that really impacted you as well then? And that is from an upcoming podcast. So, you know, don't be giving away spoilers. So you can see it's really interesting if you watch the meter, how little audio that I have here, but how much the meter actually registers. Yeah. It has, uh, has this really impacted the, the virus and everything? Has that really impacted you as well then? And it's not a bad, uh, a bad volume level, actually, despite the way that uh, the waveform looks so small, it's actually not bad. But let's see what happens when we turn on Vocal Rider and go ahead and bounce that to the next track. See, I did it again. Same thing I always do. I forgot to put it on mono. Whenever you export, whenever you bounce or whatever uh, you want to set to mono, I just keep forgetting and then I have to fix it. I do this all the time. Okay, so it did increase the strength a little bit, but let's hear how it sounds. Yeah, it has, uh, has this really impacted the, the virus and everything? Has that really impacted? Yeah, it has uh, has this really impacted the the virus? So it, it did make a, a bit of an adjustment, not a whole lot, uh, which is really interesting, but it did make a bit of an adjustment. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Now the alternate plugin that I found uh, that is one that you might select for this is the uh, Era Four Voice Leveler by Acousanus. A C O U S O N U S. Acousan Acousanus. Very awkward to say if you're me. Anyway, so there are some really cool settings uh, in here that you can play around with, whereas the vocal writer really just deals with taking the signal. You have a little bit that you can play with uh, down here as well, but for the most part, you're just looking to use it to uh, volume out that, that signal, make it nice and even. And so if we were to use this just on its basic setting, now there are no, there are no presets with this as there are with the vocal writer. You do get a multitude of presets to switch uh, from. But what you have here is nothing. So everything becomes experimental. So just taking it on its base, here's what happens when you first turn it on. Let's see what it does for the, uh, for the mix. Well, it would help if I bounced it to the right track, wouldn't it? See, these are the things that you need to pay attention to. Okay, so it looks like it did about the same, uh, visually it looks like it did about the same as Vocal Rider. Yeah, it has, uh, has this really impacted the, the virus and everything? Has that really impacted you as well then? So just straight out of the box, that's not too bad. So those are a couple of choices that you can use. I might have to play around with this a little bit more and see if I end up liking it better than, uh, than Vocal Rider. But for the Vocal Rider, you're looking at 249 standard retail. Now Waves has sales all the time. And I'm pretty sure that when I bought Vocal Rider, it was on sale for $29. So keep your eye on the Waves site. Get on their mailing list because they offer really good deals all the time. Lots of uh, bundles or if you buy, uh, you know, $50 worth of plugins, you get a third one free. 
uh, and then for every fifty dollars, you get a, an extra plugin free. So you know, keep your eye on on them. Get on their mailing list because they've got great deals that they will send to you at nauseum. I think I get something from them every single day. Uh, the Acusonics, Acusonis, just on the name alone. Uh, so the Era 4, <laughs> we'll just call it the Era 4 Leveler. That retail, you're looking at $59 at Plugin Boutique. And uh, that has, uh, I think I got that on sale for, I want to say 6 or $7. That's why I gave it a shot. I thought, I've got something I'm happy with. It does what I need it to do. But for 7 bucks, I'm willing to give something else a shot. And, uh, and I liked it. But the standard uh, at Plugin Boutique is 59 so uh, be prepared to pay for that. Plugin Boutique is another one. It's a great resource. They have tons and tons of plugins and really great prices, lots of sales. I, I buy a lot of my stuff there. So uh, get on their mailing list as well. And those links are in the show notes. Now that will pretty much cover it for, uh, for the uh, levelers. Now let's move on to the compressors. And we're just going to keep this one here that we worked on. We're going to move this audio down to the next channel where we're going to deal with the compressors. Now, the, the one I use, and I'm sure people were not happy with, is the uh, Cakewalk Sonatus Compressor. Now, this was a program that came with Cakewalk if you were an owner, or it might have been part of that first FX1 expansion pack. I can't remember, but this has been around forever. And uh, it's solid, it's sturdy, it works. You can also use the CLA uh, series compressors. Those work great too. But this one, it's dialed in, so I just keep using it. And uh, for those of you that uh, are Cakewalk users from the old days that have retained this, great. If you're not, if you're using anything else, or if you are a Cakewalk by BandLab first-time user, uh, you did not get this plug-in. And so there are uh, there's an alternate I'm going to show you here that I'm not quite sure how I feel about, but there are tons of compressors out there. There's no shortage of that. But just to give you an idea of what we would be looking at on this clip after the uh, the volume leveling, here's what it would do. I want to make sure I, uh, I want to make sure that I select the right one this time. Wow, what's happening to my voice? I haven't spoken really much today, uh, and even though it's uh, almost eight o'clock at night when I'm recording this, I still haven't said much all day. Oh wow! Well, it was on mute. I'm having a good time with this today. I'll tell you. Okay, so we got a little bit more signal out of it, but let's hear how it sounds. Yeah, it has. Uh, has this really impacted the the virus and everything? Has that really impacted you as well? Then, so it's pretty nice and clean. There's no artifacts or anything that I can hear that it's added. Um, just gives you a little bit more uh, volume level with uh, you know making sure that things don't go don't get too hot. Now that's the one that I use. As I said, let's see what the other one is. And that is the WA Production Vocal Compressor. So this is really designed specifically for vocals. Again, no presets. So this is something that you're going to have to experiment with on your own. Now, you do have some good settings here, a lot of stuff to play with. And uh, you have makeup gain, which is always good. You have a gate on it and a separate output. So you have you have a lot to work with here. But it's going to be a little bit experimental until you find those sweet spot settings. Whereas with the other one, I've been using it for years, so I, I can find something pretty quickly. So let's just test this out a little bit. Really impacted the, the virus and everything. Has that really impacted you as well then? Okay, that's not bad. But let's say you lower this a little bit. Yeah, it has, uh, has this really impacted the, the virus and everything? Has that really impacted you as well then? So now it's starting to distort a little bit as I uh, as I move it to compress a little bit too much. Yeah, it has uh, has this really impacted the the virus and everything? Has that really impacted you as well? Then, 
So you're going to want to be a little bit careful on the levels you use. Make sure that you're listening through. And remember, if your podcast is an hour long, this is going to process on that whole track. So while we're listening to a very short sample here, uh, you want to make sure you know where your peaks are and, and then go back and test those and make sure that you didn't get any artifacts, any distortion, any clipping, anything that just doesn't uh, sound good because the compressor was compressing too hard. And uh, so that's a, another alternative for you. But let's go ahead and just process that. And it's doing that, by the way, because as I as I select the clip, you see the highlight bar up here. So when I go to uh, process it, it's only trying to process that bar and that doesn't really work. OK. So that's the compression side of things. Now to compare, of course, like I said, you can't get the Sonatus compressor unless you were a previous uh, older version Cakewalk user. However, you can get the WA Production Vocal Compressor for $39 at Plugin Boutique. And uh, again, I have seen that on sale. I think uh, with that one, I think I paid eight or nine dollars when it was on sale and they have a ton of other compressors there. I wanted to test this one out because this was specifically designed for vocals. So uh, I thought that would be an, an interesting one to try. And it's not bad. Uh, like I said, you have to be really careful what levels you use. I find that I can push the Sonatus a little bit harder, which is why I'll probably continue to use that over the WA production vocal compressor. But who knows? I'll probably give it another shot. I'll sit down and play with it a little bit more, see what I can really do with it. But for now, for our purposes here, that gives us a good idea idea of what we're looking at. So for now, I'm going to put this on hold. We're going to come back to this audio a little bit later. Now we're going to talk about the noise suppressors. Now the noise suppressors, uh, as, as we all know, I think I've been pretty clear about which one I use on every single podcast I do, starting with January 2019, somewhere in there. I think it was towards the end of the month. You guessed it, IDC by Audionamics. Will not do a podcast without this. I know I'm already setting you up for saying that the other one's not as good. And I don't think it is, and I'll show you why. But for now, we're going to test uh, the IDC on this particular track. Let's listen first without it and see what we're, what we're dealing with here. Okay, so that's a lot of noise coming through the phone right there. And we definitely want to get rid of as much of that. Now, I'm not sure how well you can hear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up a bit. Okay, so now you can even see the noise. Okay, that's a lot, right? And that's that's usually more than I would get. But in this particular case, that's what I was able to get. So let's take a look and see what IDC can do with that. Now, this is uh, much louder than it would normally be. Normally, it would be at the patch uh, or at the level that we first listened to it on. But just to see what this can do. Well, it would help if I turn the, uh, the channel effects on now, wouldn't it? So this is able to get a lot of that background noise out of there, the hiss. Some of this stuff, when it gets to this level, you're going to have to go through and do it manually. You can't expect this to take it out. It's it's basically a noise suppressor. It's not a background insanity suppressor. So, but that's interesting. So let's uh, let's hear again in one of these bare sections what that did. And again, without it. So let's listen to this section right here specifically. There it is. So this is going to clean up as much of that as possible. And again, you can't expect it to fix all that background stuff because this is really designed for, for the noise, the frequencies that are, are on the higher range. So uh, now let's compare that, though, in all fairness. Let's give this a shot. The uh, Waves NS1, that is the other one. Now this one. There's really no settings to it. Uh, it's it's just you kind of dial up 
where you want the noise to uh, the noise suppression to work very much like IDC. Uh, there's no settings or no presets on that. You just dial it into where you feel it's going to be uh, the most advantageous. So just a simple slider. Let's see what we can do here. That's not bad, actually. This is probably the best I've heard it so far. So here, let's check out this section. So it is a little slower reacting, I think. Even though it's not taking off that initial uh, thing right away, whereas uh, IDC is cutting that off a little bit, it's still not taking out all of that air. So we have to go higher. Okay, so that's how high up we have to take it to, uh, to get rid of that noise. So let's hear how the whole thing sounds then. Yeah, I'm going to say IDC is still more responsive, and uh, that's why I don't use the NS1. I actually got that before I got IDC, and uh, and I tried using it, and I thought I I just I'm just not feeling it. I think it's a good product. I think it has certain functions that it's probably very good at. Um, I prefer IDC, but let's look at your budget because that might make a difference too. So the Instant Dialog Cleaner, I just checked Audionamics website and it is currently sitting at $65 for a purchase. And you do have to have an iLock because it does go on, the, the license does go on an iLock. So uh, if you don't already have one, which you probably do, I think they're around $30 or so. So total cost, you would be looking at about a hundred bucks. Um, but if you already have the iLock, then you're looking at 65. And um, for the uh, Waves NS1 noise suppressor, it's $149. And that, again, is just your standard retail. So I'm pretty sure when I picked this up, this was another one that I saw on sale for $29 or $29.95. So uh, it depends on where, uh, you know, when you happen to grab it. Again, get on the mailing list. A lot of times they're like, hey, here's the 40 plugins this week that are at $30. Go check them out. And the uh, noise suppressor's on there. Um, so it's, it's going to be a matter of what time you find it but you may be able to get a good deal on it if you think it's a plugin you want to try. Also, I know that Waze does, I think Audionamics does, they have a trial that you can download it and give it a shot. When I first wanted to check out IDC, I saw it on an ad. I want to say, I want to say it was on Facebook. And, uh, and I couldn't find the uh, trial download. So I just wrote to them and they sent me the link. I'm like, perfect, downloaded the trial within uh, two minutes. I just bought it because I, I just thought it was perfect. But if you like the NS1 better or some other plugin, uh, feel free. But I'm always going to recommend, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that because you never know what will come out with technology growing as fast as it does. Waze also has, I believe, an NS2 that I have not played with yet. So that might be one that you would uh, want to play with first. But for my money, Audionamics IDC, every single podcast. I will not do a podcast without it. And that is all I have to say about that. And I've said it probably ad nauseum. So there is one more tool that I want to show you guys that was a recent addition to uh, the podcast. I think I just introduced this a couple of weeks ago and it's, uh, it's the we're in the second week of June now. And uh, I, I saw it on sale. It was recommended by a friend of mine and I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. What the hell? It sounds like a good deal. So this is going to be the uh, voice centric plugin from Waves and it is the Greg Wells voice centric plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, how it works and see if you, uh, you know, if you could see a worthwhile difference in the quality of the audio. So let's listen to this audio first without it. Yeah, it has uh, has this really impacted the the virus and everything has that really impacted you as well then? Okay. So, when we turn it on 
and we take a look at it. it looks very simple another very simple dial control right uh, however this one has some really good presets and some really cool effects so you've got a doubler a delay and a reverb on here as well as the uh, you know the just the intensity of the of the processor the main processor itself and if you're going for podcasts the one that I'm really liking for my voice in particular is the voice podcast it doesn't have any of the effects on because on a podcast you're not going to want to do any of this you're not going to want to delay or a reverb you're not going to want to double your voice um, that would be a little bit silly otherwise you're sounding like Paul McCartney doing a vocal track but this is not just designed for uh, dialogue it's designed for vocal processing so you do have some really cool uh, you know different effects you've got a couple of different podcast choices plus of course you can make your own settings as well but let's hear it again without uh because i've been talking and hear what it sounds like yeah it has uh, has this really impacted the the virus and everything has that really impacted you as well then yeah it has uh, has this really impacted the the virus and everything has that really impacted you as well then yeah it has uh, has this really impacted do you hear the difference? It's just adding just that little extra that makes it sound a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, a little more professional. And honestly, that's that's sometimes just the difference that you need. It's just that slight edge that's going to bring just a little bit more quality to it. So I have added that to my uh, arsenal as a uh, as a permanent fixture again, unless I find something better. So. That's pretty much it for the podcast uh, tutorial, guys. I really uh, hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that maybe it sparked some ideas for things that you could do with your own show. If you have any questions, give me a holler at uh, scott at scotthaskin.com. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. I hope you, uh, you get something out of this. And maybe at some point, if I find a new toy, I'll be back to add to the series. But for now... I think we pretty much covered it all. You guys take care. Thank you for watching and enjoy.